we're looking at z minus a. So, like, w my point here is that there's going to be a mag we can integrate along here, or we can integrate along here, whatever. We can we can integrate pretty much anywhere we like, but the function is bounded. So there is there is going to be a value of z which corresponds to the maximum value of the function. It also means that the difference between z and a is also going to be bounded. For example, we could shrink the radius of the circle here and z minus a would decrease. We could also increase it, but the function is bounded, so z minus a is always going to be less than a number, which I call beta. And since this is the case, the actual value of f of z minus f of a is also bounded and has a maximum value alpha and is always going to be less than a particular, excuse me, has a maximum value and we can say that it's always going to be less than some other number which we call alpha. So what we can say is that the magnitude of the integrand is always going to be less than alpha over beta. Whatever the maximum value of the function is because it's bounded, get a number that's slightly bigger than it and you can have alpha or beta. But if we restrict ourselves to the circle R, the radius rho has got to be less than beta. And therefore we can rearrange or we can rewrite this equation as I've done at the bottom of your screen where we insert rho instead of beta. If you're not convinced you can have a look at the manipulation at the center of your screen. Something I'm not going to dwell on so you can pause the video. Now, I introduced the ML inequality in video number six, which is Cauchy's theorem. I've discussed that here in the center, where we say that the magnitude of our contour integral is going to be less than or equal to M times L. L is the length of our curve C, and M is a number such that the magnitude of the integrand is always going to be less than M. Now we're going to, it's a closed contour integral around a circle. So the length of course is going to be twice pi times the radius. The radius is rho. So the value for L is twice pi times rho. If you think about it, we've already calculated M as well. M is equal to alpha divided by rho. Provided we confine ourselves to the, uh, confine ourselves to the circle of radius rho. This means that the absolute magnitude of the integrand, excuse me, the integral is less than or equal to ML, which is less than or equal to alpha over rho, which is M, multiplied by twice pi times rho, which is L, or it's twice pi times alpha. That is the maximum value of the integral. It is bounded, of course, we know that. If you're not convinced of this, let's look at it in another way. We're trying to take the magnitude of the integral. This is the same as taking the magnitude of the, the integrand, so the numerator and the denominator. Previously, where I asked you to pause the video, I showed that the magnitude of z minus a is equal to rho, provided we confine ourselves to the contour of the circle capital R with radius rho. I also discussed why, if the function is bounded, it has to have a maximum value. I define alpha as a number which is greater than this maximum value. In actual fact, in this particular case, it's greater than or equal to. It's, it's not very important. This means we can rewrite this using an inequality. So we have alpha over rho, and we're integrating it ds, where I'm using ds instead of dz. And we use the differential arc length formula, which I discussed in the previous video. So see video number seven if you want to work out why this is equal to twice pi times rho. Of course, you're gonna have twice pi times rho times alpha over rho, giving you twice pi times alpha. Let's return to our result. The magnitude of our integral is gonna be less than or equal to twice pi times alpha, where alpha is just some number. What we're going to do now is shrink the 
contour radius rho down to zero. And in doing so, we'll see that the integral is going to go to zero because the integral is always going to be less than twice pi times alpha, but alpha depends on the radius. So basically, the whole thing is going to shrink down to zero in the limit, of course, because f of z is getting closer and closer to f of a. Going back to our original integral, capital I, we see that I2 is after going to zero and we're simply left with twice pi i times f of a. Finally, we have the Cauchy integral formula, that the integral of f of z, which is an analytic function, divided by z minus a, is twice pi i times f, small f of a. Just remember, by the way, that we could rewrite this as capital F of z. Capital F of z is the function which is not analytic. Small f of z is analytic. Now, although the Cauchy integral formula is a particularly important result, especially in this particular series on uh, complex analysis, I'm not going to really get detailed into its uh, significance right now. That's something which is going to happen when I discuss the Lorentz series and the residue theorem. I'd just like to say a quick review. If we take the closed contour integral around a function which is analytic at all points, then we get zero. However, if the function capital F of Z has a pole at some point, we're able to rewrite it in terms of a function which is analytic, small f of z, and maybe a z minus a, which a, a would be the pole. So if we integrate this other function around our pole, we don't get zero. In fact, we get the value of a function small f evaluated at the pole multiplied by twice pi i. A quick look ahead, we could rearrange this particular formula for f of a. As we'll see later on, f of a is referred to as the residue of the function capital F of z at z is equal to a. This particular expression is only valid in the limit as z approaches a. And we know of course that small f of z is analytic. It is differentiable and can be represented as a power series. It's simple to differentiate this and show that we have the generalized Cauchy integral formula, which I've written at the bottom of your screen. This is something we won't use until uh, towards the very end when we discuss the residue theorem. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you.